נגילה הבא, נגילה הבא, נגילה בן מחא הבא, נגילה הבא, נגילה הבא, נגילה בן מחא. הבא נרננה, הבא נרננה, הבא נרננה בן מחא. הבא נרננה, הבא נרננה, הבא נרננה בן מחא. have two countries. Their original home is in Naples, where any and every type of music seems to float in the air. That's why we've chosen to start our musical tour of the world in Naples, the city of music and song. perfect example of the fact that the woman is the true supporter of the family. In this city, the beauty of a young girl is intensely appreciated. It is considered public property like a classic work of art. Everyone has the right to bask in its radiance and to show their appreciation as best they can. With luck, her young admirer's jacket will only need a good brushing. The fascination of the unknown is always irresistible, even if sometimes the unveiling is disappointing. This is petty gangster territory, ruled by hoodlums. They pride themselves on their ability to handle with the same competence a woman, their clasp knife, and other people's wallets. Sinister young men who take great care not to be discovered in a generous or a sentimental act. For if this happened, what would become of their reputations as fearsome kings of the underworld? A drunken sailor can be sure of a warm welcome here and an excellent remedy to clear his wine-befuddled brain. The traditional clown, Pazzariello, infects a fun-loving group with his contagious gaiety, throwing a dance beat to the winds like confetti. On with the show!
the hot Neapolitan sun to night and the neon lighted streets of America. These highly colored flashing lights promising entertainment, excitement and adventure seem to forbid loneliness, to ban all dull and melancholy thoughts, even if only temporarily. Many Americans swallow a pep pill before starting a night on the town. But most find there's more than enough stimulation in a good whiskey, a fine band, and a pretty face wherever they look about them. Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around. You love it, bet your bottom dollar, you lose your blues in Chicago, Chicago. Come that Billy Sunday could not shut down. On State Street, that great street, I just want to say. They do things they don't do on the Chandelier. You'll have the time, the time of your life. I saw Manny dance with his wife in Chicago, Chicago, my hometown. This is the rhythm of playtime in America. Young, frenetic, carefree, millions of people answer its summons as night falls. How can we resist the temptation to follow the example of so many millions? Las Vegas, with her beckoning signs, is offering to show us a sample of her many exciting and colorful night spots. What are we waiting for? What have we here? A song dedicated to the glories of Paris, presented in the very best Parisian style. Europe may be old in years, but when it comes to showtime, she's certainly young in spirit. <laughs>
As the neon lights flicker and die out, the sun rises. And as the stars in the skies over California fade from sight, stars of another kind stretch and rise to face another day before the cameras. Oh, my dear, I'm so lonely. Hurry back, hurry back. Oh, my love, hurry back. I'm yours. Return to me. Oh, my heart wants you only. Dino Crocetti is better known to all of us as Dean Martin. He's of Italian origin, as you might have guessed from the way he sang the last verse of the song we have just heard. And now we are going to keep a daily ancient Rome with a new young pop singer. This young lady generally has no use for traditional and sentimental melodies, but when she sings about love, even Mina becomes romantic. Per me, me, 
In her song, Mina sang about rooms without walls. This makes it easy for us to watch this young lady who thinks she's unobserved, perhaps. <laughs> In such absolute privacy, every gesture is spontaneous and natural. Even though she believes she's alone, a well-brought-up girl maintains her modesty, dressing and undressing with decorum. Oh, well, some of them do. This is the end of the day for one, the beginning for the other. We have no idea what kind of jobs they have, but obviously they keep very different hours. Perhaps they are studying abstract science or higher mathematics. Whatever it is, it certainly makes them oblivious to their surroundings. Or maybe they're ignoring each other out of that fine sense of modesty we were talking about. When one starts at opposite ends, one meets in the middle. One stocking going on, one coming off. This is our moment of decision. Naturally, all those with high moral principles will only watch the girl who is dressing. One or two in our audience might even peek at the other, but they can't blame us. After all, they had the opportunity of choosing. <laughs> A woman is a born actress. Every gesture has some dramatic significance. Even to remove a slip requires the sort of writhings and wrigglings that make one think there must be ants about the place. They like this to be attributed to temperament. In the bullring, this would be called the moment of truth. What we can see should be called a white lie. Oh well, in this deceitful world, it's better than nothing. The trouble is, there ain't no justice. Some people can't afford a pair of shoes, and some wind up wearing nothing else. Some go out to work, and some just roll into bed. And now, fellow spectators, we wind up exactly as we started, looking at a pretty girl curled up in bed. All the rest of the scene was frivolous and unimportant, a simple glimpse into everyday life. To witness more spectacular and dramatic events, we must cross the Pyrenees.
In Paris, it's almost unheard of to quarrel over a woman. There are too many of them. Every one of these signs is advertising an unlimited supply of lovely girls. Perhaps the most promising of these is the crazy horse, the elite among striptease shows. Other nightclubs regard stripping as an entertainment. But here it has become a solemn ritual that the initiated follow with the gravity of a gathering of owls. Perhaps some members of the audience do enjoy themselves, but if so, they certainly do a great job of disguising the fact. These are no mere spectators, they are judges, experts on anatomy. In this chaste atmosphere, their expressionless faces suggest that they are looking at a list of stock exchange quotations, or a lecturer expounding on the feeding habits of the duck-billed opossum. She really deserves a round of applause for the cool way she continues her act in the face of such an apathetic audience. <laughs> Having fun, Professor? Even the sight of her lovely long legs doesn't raise a smile of pleasure on the solemn faces of the spectators. Maybe she should read up on the feeding habits of the duck-billed opossum. Anything is worth trying to get some sort of reaction out of that bunch of frozen-faced, cold-blooded, inhuman beings. Perhaps a snappy lecture on the love life of the snaggletooth newt would do the trick. We said they had the gravity of a gathering of owls, stuffed owls with inferior quality sawdust. The lady seems discouraged at last. Cheer up, Professor. From this viewpoint, she might be called pint-sized. Perhaps when seen through a foaming glass, the gentleman will find the show more interesting and wake up. Ah, now that we have a good view of the lady's beautiful long hair, we should get some reaction at last from the clients of the crazy horse. They are Cubans. A Havana cigar is always good, but a woman doing a striptease can go to your head like a glass of champagne. Cubans. Overcome by her enthusiastic reception, and probably feeling the cold, our young lady philosophically wraps her long hair about her and disappears into welcoming depths of a foaming glass. Well, we enjoyed your act anyway. We leave the long-haired lady for a brunette with all her clothes on. The queen of the existentialists, Juliette Greco. Je voudrais tant que tu te souviennes Des jours heureux où nous étions amis En ce temps-là, la vie était plus belle Et le soleil plus brûlant qu'aujourd'hui Les feuilles mortes se ramassent à la pelle Tu vois, je n'ai pas oublié Les feuilles mortes se ramassent à la paix 
les souvenirs et les regrets aussi. Et le vent du nord les emporte dans la nuit froide de l'oubli. Tu vois, je n'ai pas oublié la chanson que tu me chantais C'est une chanson qui nous ressemble Toi tu m'aimais et je t'aimais Nous vivions tous that have become faded with the passage of time. This is the song that belongs to a terrible period in history, composed during World War II. Well now, to cheer us up, let's watch a platoon of soldiers in training. Ladies in uniform. Fierce. ma'am, I surrender.
Merci, merci beaucoup. Now it's the men's turn to show what they can do. It's highly unlikely that the acrobatic Jimma boys will offer an exhibition of song and dance. They are famous for their ability to give and take offense. The rhythmic delivery of their insults is accompanied by a series of quick-fire slaps and kicks. We thought it was about time to show you an act both refined and romantic. <laughs>
the human hobby horse of the Jimma Boys says goodbye to her. On every stage, act follows act in a succession of different spectacles. At this hour of the evening, Naples takes her turn to supply the stage. In Naples, nightly serenades fill the quiet air with passionate declarations of love. Someone sings, hurry on down, Caroline, and I'll fill you up with kisses and wine. This lovesick young man makes careful preparations with his companions to serenade his sweetheart. I love you truly, Sophia, the most beautiful babe in the area. But when an admirer is short-sighted, he sometimes picks the wrong balcony, and his most beautiful babe in the area turns out to be wasted on his listener. These small side streets are very complicated. A short-sighted young man finds it very difficult to discover the right house. When he thinks he's sure of his balcony, he joyfully starts his serenade. But the skirt that appears is not the one he hoped for. I appreciate music, my sons, but not at this hour. Come back tomorrow. I'll see you in church at seven sharp. Third time lucky. Perhaps this is the balcony. But there's no sign of life. They say that all Neapolitan girls are secretly crazy about our singer, Peppino Di Capri. But this one is carrying the secrecy too far. <laughs> Nothing doing. Either she's deaf or she's crazy about someone else. What a pity. Because if the girl's deaf, she'd certainly be the ideal wife for Peppino Di Capri. Good night, honey. Better luck next time, Peppino. At least this young lady enlivened the background for us while you were singing. And Italy is the land of glorious backgrounds. Not that this takes second place. Under a technicolor sky in the garden of his villa, Dean Martin is ready to keep his date with us. Come bella della luna, brilla strette, strette come butto, belle faste già. Sotto celle de Roma. Down 
Each avenue be a street or star that you can see him disappear two by two on an evening in Roma. Do they take him for express? Oh, yeah, I guess so. On each lover's arm, a girl I wish I knew. On an evening in Roma, though there's green and mandolin. Sunny Italy, the beginning has just begun when the sun goes down. So please meet me in the plaza near your casa. I am only one and one is much too few. On an evening in Rome, don't know what the country is coming to, but in Rome, do as a Rome. Strette con la butto belle pasteggia sotto cielo di Roma. Don't know what the country's coming to, but in Rome do as the Romans do. Will you on an evening in Roma sotto cielo di Roma? Okay, Dino. Thanks. Well, as long as we are in the United States of America, let's listen to the story of pistol-packing Augustus Brown. Gus Brown will be impersonated by singer George Ulmer, who will also play the chef. Town, sure mighty place that Brown got the hell out of town. Dear old America, a beer, a body, and off we ride down the endless trails of the far west where men are men and never stop trying to prove it. And the women are women. You can tell just by looking at them. The ancestors of this lovely girl were famous for their spirituals. Of course, her feminine forebears were covered to their ankles. Luckily for us, those days are over and we are no longer limited to a glimpse of ankle. The art of the striptease was born in the United States. Perhaps it was invented because Americans realized that their menfolk are fundamentally shy and must be coaxed to enjoy themselves. Well, as we can see, the girls certainly know how to coax them and have perfected the technique of stripping in public that brings them whistles and applause from all over the world. But at home, the art of stripping has reached extraordinary heights of polished refinement, of perfect timing and precision. Gypsy Rose Lee, the queen mother of all strippers, has said, taking it off is easy. It's tough to keep it dignified and respectable. Always keep it dignified and respectable. It's amazing how many things a girl can find to take off, even if she started out wearing only a hat, a few feathers, and a smile. There must be a catch somewhere. Maybe she takes a couple of feathers off with one hand and puts them on with the other. There go the feathers. As long as she keeps her hat on, it's still quite dignified and respectable. young men pictured loading bales of cotton onto a ship anchored on the shores of the Mississippi revived memories of the old days of slavery. 
the days when women were modest, at least in their appearance. The only freedom during those times was that of falling in love. Love was an emotion that maturing under the blazing sun by day and in the warm magnolia scented air of the evening often set men crazy. A sort of madness that could often be dispelled and made less dangerous by the aid of rhythmic music and suggestively abandoned dancing.
waters of Old Man River carry down to the sea the tales of Negro slavery. Paris, the waters of the Seine carry down to the sea tales of unrequited or lost love. Stories that in poetry and song only speak of love without hope or future. They cry, you have left me, and without you there can be no meaning in my life. Et maintenant, que vais-je faire de tout ce temps? Que sera ma vie de tous ces gens? Qui m'indiffère maintenant que tu es parti toutes ces nuits pourquoi pour qui et ce matin qui revient pour rien ce cœur qui bat pour qui Pourquoi qui bat trop fort, trop fort Et maintenant, que vais-je faire Vers quel néant glissera ma vie Tu m'as laissé La terre entière, mais la terre sans toi, c'est petit. Vous, mes amis, soyez gentils. Vous savez bien que l'on n'y peut rien, même Paris. Grève d'ennui, toutes ces rues me tuent. Et maintenant, que vais-je faire Je vais en rire pour ne plus pleurer. Je vais brûler. Des nuits entières Au matin Je te haïrai Et puis un soir Dans mon miroir Je verrai bien La fin du chemin Pas une fleur Et pas de fleur Au moment de l'adieu, je n'ai vraiment plus rien à faire. Je n'ai vraiment plus rien. There was a time when the word carnival meant careless gaiety. Kings of industry forgot big business just by tying on a false nose. Statesmen happily put on ridiculous paper hats. Directors of funeral parlors dressed up as intrepid bullfighters. The world laughed, danced, and forgot all its troubles and worries. Wolves put on the mask of an innocent lamb. Lambs were disguised as lions. And donkeys capered about like wise owls. Among all those in clown disguise, only one wore the mask of sadness. Pierrot, wearing his traditional baggy pajamas. Today, carnival has lost its significance. Carefree, joyous laughter is no longer the order of the day. It is lost forever. In contrast to his old role, Pierrot should now make us laugh. But this is impossible, and the poor clown is not to blame. We are all contaminated by the same malady. The world has forgotten how to laugh.
Perhaps Valdez's pathetic marionette will dry his tears on a handful of confetti. In the meantime, among the five million inhabitants of Paris, most of whom have forgotten the joys of carnival, there is a group of young people who regret its disappearance. They are Brazilian. With a thermometer well below zero, they try to revive the follies of Rio de Janeiro. But Rio is far away, with a different climate, another temperament. Here, everything seems calculated and controlled. It's like trying to dance inside a refrigerator. The Brazilians, full of nostalgia, dance around the Place du Terre, the ancient square situated in the quarter of Montmartre. Marpessa Dawn, reminding us of the show Black Orpheus, expresses the nostalgic feeling of her friends. Champs-Élysées, up to the Etoile and the Arch of Triumph. These exiles try to bring the gaiety of carnival to an indifferent Paris. Paris, European queen of nightclubs, has her fun behind closed doors, not in the open air like Rio. People crowd together in theaters, in nightclubs, in all the many places where they can join in the uninhibited and lively festivities. Night after night, would-be Don Juans from the provinces are transported in their imaginations to exhibitions such as this. A lovely young woman whose ability to display her body arouses the beast in her highly excited male audience. Reality is often disappointing for all of us. The lovely girl, as she removes her clothes, is probably thinking over tomorrow's shopping list or perhaps she's regretting the large dish of pork and beans she had for supper. All of this is really much better in one's imagination. Even the colors are a thousand times more vivid. Far too often, when a man is deprived of his fantasy and faced with the naked truth, his reaction is one of total indifference, even boredom. One can almost hear him thinking, here we go again, it's always the same story. I wish she'd get it over with so I could leave without being rude. This particular spectator has finally given up. But even in his dreams, he's persecuted by visions of striptease artists. 
this craze for stripping has spread like wildfire and even reached the world of puppets. Sexless painted dolls are maneuvered sensually. A takeoff on real life, they are made to copy with disconcerting fidelity the hesitating, inviting, indecent, and yet ingenious movements of the warm-blooded women that their manipulators force them to imitate. This little marionette has no choice. She shakes and twitches and takes it off just like a real live stripper. Even a puppet might have some pride in displaying a good figure. After all, in these days of science, it's sometimes difficult to tell the false from the real. Perhaps the puppet was more attractive. From the amount of clothes left on the girl, the gentleman could measure the length of his siesta. Just long enough to spoil his night's sleep. In these uncertain times, one of the few things we can be sure of is that amour will always rhyme with toujours. Love forever. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas mon amour. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas les beaux jours. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas le passé. Et surtout, n'oublie pas que je t'aime. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas le mois d'août. Où tu as mis l'amour entre nous N'oublie pas que tu m'as tout donné Et surtout, n'oublie pas que je t'aime Quand tu te perds dans la foule Avec une autre que moi Les minutes qui s'écoulent N'en finissent pas Quand de loin j'entends ton rire Quand tu dansais, quand tu joues Je voudrais pouvoir te dire Tu risques tout, n'oublie pas, n'oublie pas mon amour. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas les bons jours. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas le passé. Et surtout, n'oublie pas que je t'aime. N'oublie pas, n'oublie pas le mois de jour. Où tu as mis l'amour entre nous. N'oublie pas que These motionless figures representing personalities from Paris become fixed in our hearts and our memories. And we are left with the echo of a beautiful love song. Diffies and different songs follow one another. High-hearted songs, triumphal marches from the capital city dedicated to the night. This is the gayest way we can end our lively tour of the world in song and music. <laughs>
Paris, 